Welcome to Malifaux University. 305, start phase. Each encounter in Malifaux is divided into three phases. The start phase, the activation phase, and the end phase. These occur five times to form five turns, and then the game ends. While the start phase has five steps that repeat each turn, a couple of the steps are irrelevant at the beginning of the game in turn one. Here's how this plays out. Both players draw up to their maximum hand size. Normally, this is six cards, but some crews and game effects allow you to increase or decrease that hand size. Once each player has a control hand, each player has the option of spending one soul stone to draw two more cards. Once they are drawn, that player must then discard any two cards from her control hand so she is back down to her maximum hand size. This is the only instance in the game where a player is spending soul stones and not a model. The attacker makes the choice to spend the soul stone or not first, and then the defending player chooses. Once the choice is made either way, the player may not change her mind. Now it's time for the initiative flip. Both players flip a single card from their decks. Whoever has the higher card doesn't win initiative, but wins the choice for initiative. If you win the initiative flip, you get to choose which player gets initiative in the turn. Keep that in mind going forward. Like most flips, the initiative flip may be cheated. The player losing this flip has the opportunity to cheat first. If that player cheats or passes the chance to cheat, the player who was originally winning the flip may then cheat if desired. If the cheating results in a tie, both players reflip. If the original flip was a tie, the attacker is given the opportunity to cheat first. While it may seem pretty straightforward, let's look at this in action a few times for clarity. Colette and the Dreamer flip for initiative. She gets an 8, and he gets an 8. Colette is the attacker in this setup, so she has the prerogative to cheat first. If she does not cheat fate, the Dreamer could put a 9 or higher down from his hand and win the flip. Alternatively, the Dreamer could also choose to not cheat fate and let it go to a reflip. This is what happens. Neither player cheats fate, and they just reflip. On the reflip, Colette gets a 7, and the Dreamer gets a 10. Colette decides she doesn't want initiative that badly and foregoes her chance to cheat. The Dreamer sees no need to cheat and claims initiative for the turn. He could choose for Colette to go first, but decides to keep initiative for himself. Let's switch up the crews to a Cadmus keyword crew, including the Archivist and a Trixie keyword crew led by Ma Tucket, and including Trixiebel, both of whom have the Ill Omens plus one ability, which collectively increases the value of their initiative flip by two. Ma Tucket also has the Careful Planning ability, which gives her crew certain effects based on the suit of her initiative flip. Cadmus is the attacker, and Trixie is the defender for now. Both crews flip, and the Cadmus player gets a 7, while the Trixie crew flips a 5. Ill Omens bumps them up to 7 to tie their opponent. Cadmus has the option to cheat first because he's the attacker, and foregoes it. Ma Tucket chooses to let it ride, and it goes to a reflip. On the reflip, Cadmus flips a measly 2, but Trixie flips the Black Joker. While the Black Joker is not an automatic loss, it has a value of zero, and the player who flips it is not allowed to cheat. With the Ill Omens ability, both crews are again tied at two. Cadmus has the right to cheat first since he's the attacker, but he also knows that Trixie cannot cheat because she flipped the Black Joker. If he cheats anything as low as a three, he'll win initiative. Just for kicks, he lets it play out and goes for another reflip. Cadmus flips a 12, while Trixie flips an 11. Ill Omens bumps that to a 13. Cadmus doesn't care to cheat, and Trixie wins the choice of initiative. She claims it for herself, and moves on to her careful planning ability. The tome in her initiative flip lets her draw two cards. Even with an ability like this, she cannot exceed her maximum hand size of six cards, so she will draw two and discard two, keeping a hand of six. Remember that you don't have to be losing in order to cheat. If Ma Tucket flips a 10 and the Cadmus player flips a 2, Cadmus would have the chance to cheat first because he's losing, but whether he does or not, Ma Tucket can then opt to cheat in a card with the suit she wants for her careful planning ability. She could do this even if it winds up making her lose the initiative flip. Once initiative is determined, 
any start phase effects are now resolved. This is when Ma Tucket would resolve the effect of her careful planning ability. The Archivist has an Arcane Shield ability that gives him shielded plus two during the start phase, so that happens now too. The player with initiative chooses the order for the start phase effects to resolve. That may be another important factor to consider if you win the initiative flip and are thinking about giving initiative to your opponent. The first thing your opponent gets to do is call the order for start phase effects. You may figure out quickly that it doesn't matter in your particular game, but it's something to think about. The last step in the start phase is to calculate pass tokens. Very simply, each player counts their models. Whoever has fewer models gets pass tokens equal to the difference between the crews. If the crews have the same number of models, regardless of their soulstone cost, then neither crew gains pass tokens. In our original Dreamer vs. Dubois game, the Dreamer has 8 models, while Colette Dubois has 11 models, largely due to her having 3 totems. This difference means the Dreamer crew gains 3 pass tokens now. That's the way the start phase plays out at the beginning of the game in turn 1. The start phase of turns 2 through 5 have a few more steps to consider. Understand that the last step of the end phase of each turn is to reshuffle your fate deck and discard piles to make a fresh deck. The steps of the end phase will get their own video, but players will go into each turn with a newly shuffled deck. At the start of turns 2 through 5, after the decks are reshuffled, both players may discard any cards from their control hands they don't want to hold on to during the next turn. Then, both players draw back up to their maximum control hand size, usually 6. As far as the Black Joker goes, there are a couple differing ideas about handling it. Some players will discard it at this time and replace it with a more useful card from their decks. Others say that the only safe place for the Black Joker is in your hand, because then you know it won't show up in a flip. While this is true, it also means you essentially play one card down in your control hand. As always, it's up to you to discover your preferred playstyle. As before, each player may spend a Soul Stone to draw up two more cards before discarding back down to the maximum hand size. The player with initiative from the previous turn still has initiative until the initiative flip of this turn is resolved, so that player makes the choice to spend the Soul Stone first. Next is the initiative flip, with the same rules for reflips and cheating as before, but now pass tokens come into play. Once the flipping and cheating is done, both players add the number of pass tokens they have remaining from the previous turn to their initiative flip totals. If this results in a tie, then the flip starts over with a new flip. If adding the pass tokens puts one player ahead of the other, that player wins the flip and chooses which player has initiative. Once that is decided, both players discard their pass tokens. Let's see that play out between the Dreamer and Colette Dubois. It's the start phase of turn 2, and the Dreamer spent one pass token during turn 1, leaving him with two pass tokens going into turn 2. They flip for initiative, and the Dreamer has an 8, while Colette has a 9. Dreamer has the chance to cheat first, since he's technically losing the flip, but he knows he's going to add 2 to his total from his pass tokens. He chooses not to cheat. Colette knows the Dreamer's total is about to be 10, and she really wants initiative this turn. She cheats in a 10 from her hand. The Dreamer adds his pass tokens for a total of 10, tying Colette's 10. It goes to a reflip. On the reflip, Dreamer flips a 3, and Colette flips a 9. Dreamer doesn't cheat, and Colette has no need to cheat. Dreamer adds 2 from his pass tokens for a total of 5 to Colette's 9. She wins the initiative flip and claims it for herself. The Dreamer then discards his two pass tokens. Any start phase effects would resolve now, in the order Colette chooses, since she has initiative, but neither crew has any start phase effects. The players now recalculate pass tokens. They have the same number of models as they did in turn 1, so Dreamer gets three new pass tokens for turn 2. That's the overview of the start phase. Pick up a printable set of all the markers and tokens you need to play Malifaux in the War Game Vault. If you haven't already, join our Patreon for early, ad-free access to all new content. And be sure to visit the Malifaux University gift shop for the latest in Malifaux-themed shirts, hoodies, drinkware, and more. Links are in the notes below. And remember, play friendly games. 
keep it simple, and have fun.